And so I just want to introduce Dr. Harold Wong today. Uh, do, do, I hit, to do I hit the continue button or do you do it, Jerry? I've got, it says this meeting is being recorded covering this, the PowerPoints. Um, you can probably just minimize that, but- um, I, I can't have... minimize it. Do I just hit continue? Dr. Wong, go ahead and hit continue and that'll allow us to move forward. Yep. <clears throat> So Dr. Wong has an amazing list of credentials that I sent out to everybody um, in, inside of the a flyer that was created. And so without any delay, uh, Dr. Wong, you have taught classes all across the country to huge ballrooms full of people. And you're willing to do that, whether it's with title companies or just, just a wider range of different um, industries and whatnot. So I'll let you take it over. Okay. I believe Dr. Wong is muted. We got to gotta unmute it. Unmute. There you go. <clears throat> And I'll click off the optimal resolution notice that popped up there. Well, I'm delighted to be here. My goal is not to be the typical boring academic. My goal is to help you make money and pioneer title and Yavapai title to make money. I have a great respect for sales in America. Nothing happens unless you either sell it or you schedule it. I mean, that's what I've learned. I'm not an ivory tower professor. I've actually started 11 small businesses, everything from farming, construction and equipment. Uh, from 2002 to 2006, I was a one man net branch mortgage operation. So I saw, saw the crazy boom and also the crash. So let's just jump right in. I packed as much information as I could into this and I'm willing to stay for questions afterwards. And let's just jump right ahead. As uh, you can read faster than I can speak, so I'm just gonna let you read this, but it's all about hoping to make, help you guys make money. Okay, and I'm putting uh, start and the, 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 the uh, PowerPoints are not, are not moving. Let's get rid of this pop-up that keeps popping up. But let's try it again. Okay, it's not moving on. So what do we do? We tried it before. Well, we got everyone on, and everything worked. So any idea of what we would do, Brian? Brian, you want to help out? You're on mute. Um, if you're able to, are you able to make it to the view where you can see the other fl uh, slides? Oh uh, yes, let's 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 end let's end end show. Okay, I, I'm in normal view now. Is it still big enough for you guys to see? That'll work just fine. Why don't you go to see? If you okay, now now it works. Perfect. Why don't we stay in that view for current, and then that'll work great. All right, fantastic. Uh, just a brief background. You can read that uh, and uh, yada, yada, yada. But for eight years, I did write the only column of money for the community section of the Arizona Republic. My research was distributed to 2,100 newspapers. But again, that sounds so academic. What you really want to know is, do I know anything about real estate? I got started with a formula given to us by some tough guys in the Southern creative real estate world. Uh, you normally had to own at least 20 or 30 buildings to be part of that group. I knew nothing about real estate. However, I could handle their tax questions. So when mortgage rates were 18% in 1981, they gave my partner and I a formula for Tucson. We bought a hundred rental houses on no money down. In 85, I bought my first hotel it was in San Diego. I converted into a popular celebrity hotel because we could offer them the one thing celebrities cannot get anywhere else, total privacy. So Whitney Houston, famous athletes like Marcus Allen, the Hall of Fame running back will stay there. Uh, 36 years later, my partners and I 
currently own 50% of all the full service hotel rooms in the Fiennes Sky Harbor market. You may have heard of them like the uh, Crown Plaza, 44th and Washington, where the Sky Train takes you right to the airport. Holiday Inn and Suites, 44th and McDowell. We put a burger theory on the front. It's the number one franchise in the country. And then the Phoenix Airport Hill and our most expensive purchase at 35 million. But our real cash cow is the Hampton Inn. Nestled between Top Golf off of 101 and the Talking Stick Resort. When the Talking Stick Resort is full in the winter with conventions, they charge four, five, six hundred dollars a night. It allows us to charge 300 plus a night. Whoever heard of the Hampton Inn getting more than 60 to 90 dollars a night? Uh, my clients are like family. Uh, these are the things I try to do for them. Basically, the three main reasons people see me for their free strategy session is to maximize retirement income, minimize stock market risk, reduce or eliminate taxes. I'm different from 99.9% of the so-called financial planners, stockbrokers, insurance agents. But the single biggest reason I'm different is for 40 years, based on the research we did at Berkeley and Stanford 40 to 50 years ago, I've never suggested a single client buy anything sold by Wall Street. No stocks, no bonds, no mutual funds. I believe in tangible assets, which is real estate, equipment leasing, Things based on actuary signs like private pensions, where if the stock market drops, you don't lose a single penny. So that's what separates me from the so-called financial planning world. What can I do for you? Hopefully, only you'll be able to tell. But again, what I want to say is knowledge is not power. Knowledge only when it's put into action will get you a result. So hopefully I'll be able to work with some of you and create more deals for you and therefore more income for you. So these are the things we hope to do. Now, hopefully some of these concepts I'm gonna to give to you are totally unique and you've never seen before and hopefully you can implement with them. Now does the 80-20 rule apply? The 80% of your sales come from 20% of your sources. It's not necessarily a case Oh, over 50, about 15 years ago, I sat down for an hour and a half with Brian Buffini in a Scottsdale hotel lobby. He told me within real estate offices, it's no longer the 80-20 rule. He forecasted that with the rise of super real estate teams, it would become the 95-5 rule, where 5% of the realtors in an office produce 95% of the sales. And certainly they're giant teams like Carol Royce team advertising on the Rush Limbaugh show. Her office was just a few doors down from me when for 10 years I had an office at Keller Williams Realty East Valley. However, I do not operate as a typical realtor where I drive people around or I sit in open houses. Since 81, I've operated as an owner, not a realtor working for commissions. <clears throat> so what are your best sales sources? I know you market the realtors, mortgage people, but do you market direct to consumers and what type of consumers might you market to? I'm going to cover in this brief presentation, five different markets you might want to go after professional fix and flippers, investors who own 10, hundred plus rental homes. A number of years ago, I asked the title company to run that list. You can get a list of those that own 10 or more rental houses and also a list of 20 or more rental houses. I don't know whether Pioneer Title has ever gone over these two first two markets. Commercial realtors and their clients and aggressive realtors and mortgage people, ideally they want to market to the top 20%, the more affluent part of their database. Now let's talk about what can you offer of value to these markets? What you can offer to the professional fix and flipper is tax education. Many people do not realize that if you're a professional fix and flipper, you're treated by the tax law as a dealer. You do not get any of the tax benefits we normally associate with real estate. And this is a shock to a lot of people. All ordinary income subject to self-employment tax, which is their social security, Medicare tax. I've been self-employed my whole career. 
So it's 15.30% off the top before you hit federal and state income tax. You don't get any depreciation. There's no capital gains. You're not eligible for section 1031 tax deferred exchanges and you're not eligible for installment sales. Just think of it, everything is ordinary income tax like wage income. And again, here's a chart that shows the different. We're gonna skip over it. Again, I wanna emphasize all the tax benefits you think associated with real estate, none of them go to dealers. So how do we wipe out their tax? Okay, there are four strategies we can use to wipe out their tax. So let, let's go to case studies. I believe in showing case studies because people will remember it. Let's suppose you find a single age 55 fix and flipper that closes 10 deals in a year. He may have one or two crews. Uh, years ago, uh, when I was at Keller Williams Realty, two doors down was a professional fix and flip team that moved here from LA. In about a three to four year period, they did over 300 fix and flips. They had 25 deals going at any one time with two uh, fix and crews. And, uh, you know, imagine if you could have gotten their business. So let's suppose Mr. Fix and Flipper has 500,000 taxable income this year. How do we offset his tax? We can use 100,000 deduction from the defined benefit plan. Even in most CPAs, they've never used a defined benefit plan. Why? From 40 years ago to 20 years ago, there was an attack on this concept by the IRS because of been used and the number one folks using a defined benefit plan were affluent doctors and dentists. But the law still holds. You can use it, you just can't abuse it. There have been years where I've deducted 200,000 or more to my defined benefit plan. Then we do section 179 from 180,000 of solar reefers that are purchased and leased out to giant food companies, Whole Foods, Kroger, Cisco. Uh, one of my reefers is at the Miramar Starbucks Food Distribution Center. Miramar is next to La Jolla. Miramar is where they train the top naval aircraft fighters and that's where Top Gun with Tom Cruise was filmed. So now we reduce taxable income by more than half. You would owe 59,734 of tax, but you get a 26% solar tax credit. So for that fix and flipper, he winds up owing just a hair under 13,000 federal tax. If you want to wipe it off, just get, just do a little bit more. So let's look at the wealth effect. Now in economics and graduate economics is a concept called economic opportunity costs. I have never seen economic opportunity costs explained in a financial seminar. So here's the deal. That's the normal tax that fix and flip would owe. That's how much tax he really owes after making these tax planning moves. So you save him 136610 Take out your famous Hewlett Packard 12C financial calculator. I think Brian's nodding so he knows what that is. That's your payment key. 8% equals I or interest. Very good. 15 years equals N. So it's not just that you're saving 136,000 of tax every year for 15 years. It's the fact that you can now invest that. So actually the FV stands for future value. You've created a little over 4 million extra net wealth. Here's the question to the fix and flipper. Mr. Fix and Flipper, if I can create 4 million more net wealth for you, would you give Pioneer Title all of your deals or at least 90% of your deals? Have any, Carrie, have any of your title reps been able to make an offer like this to a key target person? No, I never had that. All right, let's go on. As they say in infomercials, there's even more, hold on. Let's go to the second market. A six year old investor, he owns a hundred rental homes. This is a real life situation 
who came to a clear title seminar. And I'll show you the flyer from four years ago when the title of the seminar is sell your real estate and pay no capital gains tax. 60 years old, but his first wife, he just got married for her first time two years ago. His wife has no background in real estate, doesn't want to peel wallpaper off, doesn't want to fix toilets. She just wants to enjoy life with her new husband. So she's bugging him, start selling off the portfolio. So let's just assume he would have 150,000 taxable income for each house and he wants to sell 10 a year. So at the end of 10 years, he sold his hundred. And that's what his wife wants. So sells 10 houses, 1.5 million federal taxable income. You use a super defined benefit plan, deduct 500,000. Section 179, except 480,000 of solar reefers. Revised taxable income drops almost by two thirds. Still all 152,928 tax. We use the solar tax credit. So he winds up still owing 28,128 tax versus 491,522 if we didn't make these tax planning moves. Brian and Carrie have the calculator. So they will punch into the calculator in front of this potential big target. And they say, Mr. Successful Real Estate Investor with 100 rental houses, if I can show you how to create 7 million more net wealth, will you give Pioneer Title your 100 deals? Payment equals 463,394 annual tax saved. It looks like Carrie is punching that into his Hewlett Packard calculator. Am I correct? Correct, Carrie? Good. N equals 10 years. He sells 10 houses a year. I equals 8% is assumed rate of return on cash invested. FB is future value, 7.25 million. Is, did your calculation find that, Carrie? Absolutely, yes. All right. And uh, Brian, looks like Brian's doing the calculation. Uh, Carrie Sparks, have any of your people shown economic opportunity costs to a potential target and told them you could create 1 million, 2 million, 4 million, or 7 million net worth for them by using your education brain trust, which is me, by the way, and I offer that for free to Pioneer Title. Not yet. Have, you, have any of you guys used this marketing approach? No? Okay, at least we've got, we've got something new for you. So how do we get these solar tax credits? Reefers are units of co cool food trailers. Next time you see a Fry's food trailer, which is owned by Kroger, if you're in Southern California, they own Rouse. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, they own Fred Meyer. You will see only two names on it, Thermal King or Carrier. They're diesel powered reefer, very noisy, a lot of pollution, but only two companies carve up this giant multi-billion dollar market until my company. Nine of us, 13 years old, of the nine owners, four of us as PhDs, we have invented the only zero emission technology that's commercially viable according to California Air Resource Board that governs the air quality of 40 million people in California. It is a solar powered reefer and it's a whole power system. You see it attached to the front of a food trailer, solar panels cover the entire top of that 48 to 53 foot trailer, a momentum generator we invented underneath and so a lithium ion battery packs to store the energy. These are the benefits. We coo three times the coefficient performance. Here's the dirty secret. When Cisco does 12 restaurant delivers in a 12 hour shift at 4 p.m. during hot summer, we measure the back of the food trail at 60 degrees. It should be 37 degrees for meat and dairy, just like in your refrigerator. It cannot keep up when it's summer, whether it be in the Southeast 90 degrees and 90% humidity. Uh, the drier area, 110 degrees in Arizona, Nevada, but dry, Southern California, diesel powered reefers cannot keep up. 
we can, we blow as cold as 48 below zero, three patents issued, three more pending. But here's the bottom line. There are two issues. Why are all these giant food companies going this way? One, they don't have a choice. By 2030, California mandates all 50,000 diesel power reefers that never leave California must be electric. California's very tough. By 2030, they want half of all their electricity to be clean energy. Starting in January of 2020, uh, and I'm sure many of you, your title reps don't realize, certainly most people in Arizona don't realize, starting in January 2020, any new home built anywhere in California must be, have solar on it, or it must be powered by solar electricity coming from a nearby solar farm. That's how tough California is. And what's the payoff to the end users, whether it be Kroger, Cisco, Starbucks? We will cut, for these giant food companies, we will cut their diesel bill in half. Believe it or not, when a Kroger or Fry's in Arizona, semi-truck pulls a diesel-powered reefer and trailer and deliver to three or four Kroger stores and comebacks every night, it takes as much diesel to power the reefer as it does the semi-truck that pulls the food trailer. With our technology, they don't have to buy diesel for the reefer, and so we cut their diesel bill in half. I filled up with my gas unleaded Supreme from my old 98 car, and guess what? It was $3.70. In California, it's way higher. They have the highest gas taxes anywhere in the nation. Uncle Sam, wants you to go solar. Whether it's the new Green Deal, even way before the current administration, it was the 2005 Energy Policy Act. It was renewed twice, most recently in 2015. And that's what brought in the credits for wind power, solar, and geothermal. People don't realize air pollution is a killer. Creates 43% of all the deaths from lung disease, but it creates about one fourth of the deaths from stroke and heart attack. So heart attack, stroke, cancer, those are your three killers. And now you couple with coronavirus, if air pollution weakens the lungs, coronavirus finishes you off and kills you. California understands this. Again, we are based on competitive grants starting three years ago. They find we are their number one poster boy for every dollar they give us in grants, we reduce dangerous diesel fossil fuel pollutions by at least 10 times the second best proposal. Uh, January 31st, 2020, a typo there. That's the San Diego Union Tribune. California announces 44 million for clean energy grants. We got 10 million of it. That's our CEO. Our manufacturing plant, by the way, is in Mesa a quarter mile southwest of Greenfield McDowell, close to the Boeing plant and the Falcon Field. Here's the bottom line. There are 6,100 either ports, like the Port of Long Beach, Port of Los Angeles, railroad terminals, but mainly it's grocery stores and food distribution warehouses. They want us to go beyond solar reefers and take these food distribution centers off the grid and turn them into solar farms. So now when they have their wildfires and they have the rolling blackouts in Northern California, Southern California, if you're the manager of a food distribution center and you have 50 to $100 million of food, you don't freak out because you're off the grid. And they estimate we will decrease the chance that employees working there get lung cancer will decrease that percentage by 95 to 99%. So it's about saving lives. So you can target commercial realtors that are substantial clients. Fear of high taxes is one of the three or four main reasons why they can't get listings. Example, an investor started with a fourplex 40 years ago. He's done numerous section 1031 exchanges. He now owns a 40 unit apartment building free and clear that will net 4 million profit if he sells it, <clears throat> he doesn't want to pay the taxes. I'll show you what the taxes be in, in a few slides. This was the slide for the clear title seminar that was given four years ago. Proposed new tax law is tough. 
high personal corporate tax, double the capital gains tax rate, or if you're high income, no capital gains at all. It's all ordinary income. Section 1031 now disappears. No step up in basis. <clears throat> uh, the, this is what a high income person in California currently faces. California taxes all gains at ordinary income for California income tax. There is no capital gains. By the way, Oregon has followed California. Under the proposed tax law, if you're high income on the federal level, they don't want you to have capital gains. It's gonna be ordinary income. So I'm just saying California leads the nation and a new administration wants to follow. So guess what? That's why people are leaving these high tax areas. And a number of them are coming to Arizona. That's part of the reason our housing prices have led the nation over the last 24 months. <clears throat> if you're in California, 4 million tax bowl gain, this is what happens. 39.6% federal tax is the proposal to raise it. Yeah, of course, we've always had the 3.8% net investment income tax and extra Obamacare surtax. These two taxes were put in when Obamacare was passed to pay for Obamacare. And again, if you have over a million taxable income, California taxes you have 13.3%. There is no capital gains, there's no ordinary income. So on 4 million of gain, the government gets 57.6%. Do you now understand why commercial realtors tell me Fear of paying high taxes is one of the three or four big reasons they can't get that listings from that long-term real estate investor. But what if you could show a commercial realtor how to save this client's taxes? So let's suppose he gets three more listings of apartment buildings, a 10 million of sales, and a discounted commission of 2%, that's still an extra 200,000 a commercial realtor. Assume he would owe an extra 50,000 on that tax. If he is normal high income, the tax rate's gonna be more than 25%. Again, here's what you could show that commercial realtor. Take out your Hewlett Packard 12C calculator. We're not just gonna save him 50,000 year tax on his extra 200 grand he earns. He can invest the whole 200 grand. Again, in 15 years, that creates 5.8 million. So Mr. Commercial Realtor, or head of that small commercial real estate company specialized in whatever your niche of real estate is, such as class C apartment buildings. If I can help you create slightly under 6 million more net wealth, will you give me all of your business or at least 90%? Again, uh, Brian, Carrie, you look like, uh, you're probably not as old as me because I'm 71, 40 years in creative real estate but you look like you're not beginners. Have you ever seen anyone in your title company field, including your competitors, take this approach to go after select target markets? Absolutely. Never not. seen that. Nope. It's just math. We know that all that people care about is what's in it for them. In many cases, unfortunately, they don't care if this title company is better than the other. All they care is their realtor commission or their loan offers or fee because that's the way salespeople are normally oriented. Very few salespeople have the ability to think long-term and build a long-term business. That's just the reality of the personality. In any big company, the sales and marketing personality is the exact opposite of the chief financial officer in the accounting department. So here's your fourth and fifth target market. Target the top 10% residential realtors and mortgage loan shops. Ignore the bottom 90% because you're already targeting, you're already marketing free CEO courses, free food, mixers, giveaways. And guess what? Aren't you frustrated that most of them don't give you any business or maybe they only do five transactions a year. So even if they gave you two, that's it. I'm not saying don't market to them, but do you have specific marketing concepts to go after the top 10%? In many cases, I believe you don't. So here's the three part marketing system that might apply to the top 10% of title reps, realtors, loan officers. 
I don't like bribing realtors with free stuff. I do have the three R CEU course, Advanced IRA Strategy Secrets of Roth Multi Generational Self Directed IRA. But if they're coming only for the CEU, free CEU, you probably got the wrong person there. I'd actually prefer a shorter hour and a half or two hour course, no CEU credit, and therefore you get the people that are serious and the ones that you might do business with. Anyway, I'm just trying to give you an idea that might be a screening device to screen out the people just looking for free stuff. And you tell these top 10% of realtors or mortgage folks, our goal from Pioneer Title is to help you make more money. So you need either more real estate transactions or more loan deals so you get loan fees. So let's do seminars to your affluent part, your top 10 to 20% of your database on stuff of interest specific to affluent. And then the third part of the marketing system is I can deliver via Zoom interviews that you guys record. Again, I'm not the tech guy, but sounds like you guys know Zoom. Uh, we, or you hire a video guy and I come to your office, we shoot it. Uh, articles, I have to write the monthly column for three newspapers as it is. And I'm pretty good at a first take. About three years ago, I sat down with the video guy for five hours in a Scottsdale satellite office I had in accounting setup and tear down. In about three and a half hours, I shot 110 short one to three minute videos. I only had to do a second take on 10% of them. And you'll be able to see some of them on drheraldwong.com. I think they put 40 of them up on YouTube. So now here's the concept to the very aggressive realtors and mortgage clients that want to do something unique to the affluent database. There are many marketing systems, such as the Joe Stump, the Mike Ferry, the Brian Buffini, but you guys know what's out there. I haven't run into a marketing system geared specifically to the affluent side of the database. So to these folks, your realtors and your top loan officers, the concept is this. They offer unique seminars three to six times a year geared to the affluent. Their assistant sends out seminar flyers that I create in my expense, and I'll show you four examples of them in a moment. And they send it out three weeks, two weeks, the week before. Then they call their top clients and their database, their A, A minus, maybe B plus. Their assistant calls them and personally invites them to the seminar. Pioneer Title Agency pays for or shares the cost with the realtor or loan officer, uh, or, or I know title agencies typically pick up the room, the snacks, refreshment. Now, we assume that realtors and loan offers affluent clients work, so we schedule them in the evening or on Saturday. The realtor mortgage company, your client, gives a 10-minute overview of the market. Pioneer gives a 10-minute overview and pitch for Pioneer, and I give a 75-minute seminar. Now, you want to hold the crowd for half an hour afterwards. So you provide a meal or substantial snacks as incentive to hold the audience. So the realtor that, or the loan officer, or maybe they jointly invite their clients, they can go talk to their clients, how did they like it, how to look. They can book appointments with them. And there's a famous guy, uh, uh, one of the top realtors in Southeast Valley, and it's an entrepreneur. He owns pieces of resort hotels. He built a subdivision. He owns part of Chops Steak Restaurant in Chandler. He owns part of a wine bar. But he's used the concept of having a monthly event. Maybe it's just a fun thing at his wine bar. He says for over 30 years, he never walks away from a live event without one or two pieces of business. So this is the concept here. Now, what are some topics that are popular to affluent clients? I've tested topics for the last 12 years. For eight years, I wrote the only column on money for the community section in the Arizona Republic. I now write for three different papers in affluent areas. The Awatuki Foothills News, the Dominant Free Weekly in Awatuki. Awatuki, by the way, is the number two and 13th most affluent zip code in the Phoenix metro area. If you don't have this information, I do. 
I know what are the 25 most affluent zip codes. And the key metric to me is the percentage in the zip code that have 200,000 or more household income, which means they owe taxes. Secrets of the Roth, multi-generational and self-directed IRAs. Solar business leasing. Uh, how dentists, business owners, and high-income wage earners can retire five to 15 plus years earlier without taking any Wall Street risk. Here's an example of a flyer. For the first time in the affluent age 55 plus community of Provence in Maricopa, I'm sure you've got a title rep that covers that there. Uh, we were shocked. June 5th is a seminar and we had 78 RSVPs from the residents and 70 actually showed up. Mind blowing. Normally, as you know, in public seminars, sometimes you don't get more than half of the RSVPs that show up. If it's RSVPs for a webinar through the internet, the, the national average only 20 to 40% of internet RSVPs actually attend the webinar. Secrets of Roth and multi-generational IRAs. Solar business leasing. This was done in May 2019 for the Arizona Academy of General Dentistry Convention. Uh, medicine is no longer fun, high student loans, government interference, control of your cash flow through insurance companies, the particular physicians, but also dentists, the number one thing they would like to do is be able to retire five to 15 years earlier, but it's not just restricted to medical personnel. Aren't there a number of engineers? Aren't there a number of small business people, particularly after coronavirus, that would love to be able to retire five to 15 plus years earlier than planned? By the way, the average dentist, whether a general dentist or specialist, has to work to 70 before he can retire. So here's the action plan. Understand that most of your competitors or most of your realtors or loan officers do not think long-term and they're not very organized. So target the top 10% that are willing to follow a marketing system. Cost them nothing in dollars, but it's the highest price. And that price is sustained human energy. And you ask for their business in return for these marketing concepts. I'm happy to do these seminars at no charge whatsoever. So there's no cost to pioneer title. Out of that, I'll pick up some tax lines. Stress that this marketing system is free to them. Or if you want to have them some skin into the game, have them pick up half of the minor costs for the refreshments. Uh, I don't know about you, but I live like a poor Chinese immigrant. Uh, uh, on sale, you can get four 12 packs of Pepsi or Coke products for 10 to $12. At our hotels for a box lunch, we charge our corporate clients $30 a lunch. As a poor Chinese immigrant, I can't afford to eat at the hotels that I own. I would never voluntarily pay more than $10 for a box lunch where I could go to Paradise Valley Bakery and get that. I'm just glad the corporate clients are willing to pay that. <clears throat> and here's your road to success. I do not know what a typical title rep makes on average. I don't know what your top 20% make. I don't know what your top 10% make, but what if by following this, we could generate 50,000 year of extra income for you. And of course, you don't have to pay tax on it. And let's suppose you can do this and average an 8% return, not in the stock market. Now we have seven different real estate formulas in a real estate company. I'm telling everyone, don't give us any money for a year and a half until we figure out the effect of coronavirus on office buildings, on apartment buildings. Of course, our hotels got hit harder, but one of our farmers, we simply paid eight to 9% interest paid monthly. Uh, you know, if you want to loan us money, it saves us paying two to 3% or 4% extra to hard money lenders. So here's the wealth effect. If you're a title rep or you're a realtor or your loan officer, if we can generate 50,000 a year more income, not pay taxes on it, average an 8% and do it for 20 years, you'll have an extra two and a half million dollars in your retirement kitty. If we could average 8% for 20 years and you retire in year 21, 
we're not going to stop. 8% of two and a half million is 200 grand. So you have 200 grand retirement income on top of whatever social security pays on top of whatever other savings you had. I'm assuming you got nothing. We're just saving. We're just using 50,000 a year. By the way, this is how we help doctors and dentists retire early. If you're 35 years old, you're making 200, 250, 300,000 a year. You don't want to work the 70. We just save you 50,000 a year of tax for 20 years. Now you're 55 years old and you can retire 55 instead of 75. At this point, Carrie and our tech people, uh, Brian and, and Carrie Kastelik, I'm done with the presentation. Well, there's just one more slide, so we'll go on to it. And let's give me a ring. Uh, when you, uh, By the way, you cannot text me. I'll warn everyone, you cannot text me. I do not use a cell phone on purpose. Call me. You'll be shocked. Either, only two things will happen. You'll get my voicemail. If I'm going to my fiscal office, I will not get that voicemail till late at night when I come back or the following morning. Or I actually answer the phone. The physical phone I use is 35 years old. It's got a great speaker phone. It's great. People don't even know it's a speaker phone. It is a General Electric. Uh, and But since it's that old, there's not a screen. So I don't even know who calls. I get solicited. I don't know until I pick it up. Again, I'm a poor Asian immigrant, so I've got to depreciate that phone over at least 35 years. Only you rich Americans can afford to buy a new phone. And luckily, we do have more modern phones at all of our hotels. At this point, Hi, Dr. Wong. I actually uh, muted you. Can can you uh, unmute you? Zaneba, uh, Carrie, are you able to unmute Dr. Wong? I will now. My internet's unstable. I'm sorry. I'm trying to unmute him. Uh, can you hear me? I can now. I'm there, okay. there he goes. I accidentally goes. pushed you instead of myself. So, uh, Dr. Wong, the uh, I, I've actually worked with reefer trucks. I used to own a flower shop, and we had a diesel reefer on the front of the on the front of our lot during Valentine's, and the, the reefer froze up, and I lost the whole the whole uh, Valentine stockpile of all my roses. Um, very familiar with reefers, but how, how does that work um, in a nutshell? How do we how do you get invested as a owner or a commercial real estate agent? How does that apply to them? Do they invest into the company company solar? No, no, they, they, they buy a reefer power system. The solar power reefers are the most powerful way to save tax. There's nothing even close in the tax system. When you combine a 26 percent tax credit and section 179 that allows you to deduct 87 percent of the 60,000 that an investor puts in a reefer system the year it's placed in service even if it's December let me give you an idea because I know most of you don't have a tax background uh, this this calculation for an older couple they have very low taxable income they said I want to do Roth conversions uh, I figured out they can distribute 150,000 from a traditional IRA 401k, which makes it taxable, or to convert it to Roth, one reefer with writing a check for 60,000 will offset all the federal tax on 150 to 160,000. There's nothing anywhere this powerful in the tax system. And basically, the way it works is, uh, it's typical in the food industry, whether you lease a refrigerator trailer, or a diesel power reefer, it's a 10 year lease, giant food companies, Kroger, Safeway, Whole Foods, uh, pay 7%, so you make 4,200 a year for 10 years on a very safe basis. At the end of 10 years, you get your 60,000 back. The doctor, do you buy the truck and then- No, you, you do not own the semi truck. You do not own the refrigerator trailer. You own the complete power system, the brand new reefer, 
the momentum generator underneath the trailer, the lithium ion battery packs, and the solar panels to cover the top of the food trailer. Our market is short haul, where it comes back every night behind locked doors. We do not want one of our systems to be waylaid so the Chinese Communist Party in China or the Koreans or Japanese can re or the Russians can reverse engineer it. So we want it short haul. But can we go long haul? October 2019, the big international food distributor show was in Orlando, Florida. Phoenix to Orlando is 2,400 miles one way. We've sent off one driver with our solar powered reefer attached to the front of a food trailer because it's only one driver. He has mandatory rest stops. Against all odds, he ran into five tornadoes. How much sunlight is there when there's a storm and a tornado? Not a single solar panel got torn off. He went 2,400 miles to Orlando, 2,400 miles back, and the charge on the lithium ion battery packs never dropped below 75%. So that's 4,800 miles round trip. So could we go long haul? We could, but we don't want it. We want it behind locked doors every single night so no one can reverse engineer. We got GPS, the safe way, the end user is tracking it. If they got $80,000 of steak and food and frozen lobster on it, uh, they want to track it at all points. So doctor, I, I, uh, I understand the theory of the solar pack. How do you, how does it get to the, to the leasing to the Cub Foods or the Whole Foods? Well, we, we take of everything. We don't take someone 60,000 unless we find an end user putting up 25 to 35,000. We as a manufacturer do way better than the auto industry. Unlimited 10 year parts, labor, warranty on everything, including training at the food distribution center. All you have to do is write a check and everyone gets the same tax credits, the same as your neighbor that buys the solar system and puts it on his roof. However, if you want section 179, you can't be a passive. And there are seven ways to switch from being a passive investor to being material participation active. And we have the key tax court case on it. The easiest is between you and your spouse, you spend at least 100 hours a year managing your investment. And here's the gotcha. And it's got to be at least as much as anyone else. That's why all Wall Street investments where they pull hundreds or thousands of investors, they're all passive. And so excess passive loss over passive gains so say you had 80,000 extra passive losses beyond passive gains, you can't use that to offset 80,000 of commissions as a realtor or profits as a doctor. You can't do it. But if you spend 100 hours monitoring your investment, you own the whole system. There is no one else. It only works if you own the whole system. And so that's why Wall Street can't do what I do. Because everything I do is pool giant investments typically with thousands of investors. That's why, for example, in a rental house, there's never an issue on a rental house because you own the whole house. Or maybe it's a mom and a daughter or a dad and a son or three brothers or three good friends who retire, who got out of Vietnam and survived and uh, coming back after the military, they buy a house together. It's not a giant food investment. That's why there's never an audit issue on a rental house. Does that make sense? Does so I could uh, potentially, if you had sixty thousand dollars, an individual um, create the opportunity of a hundred thousand dollars in tax credits. No, no. What it would do, you get twenty six percent tax credit. Section one seventy nine would be about fifty two thousand two hundred deduction. You combine that if you're married, filing jointly. It's enough to offset all the federal tax on 150 to 160,000 of federal taxable income. There's nothing anywhere as powerful in the whole tax code. Let me give you a contrast. Rent, uh, rent, they say have rental real estate to generate tax deductions. It generates puny. Let's say you bought a 350,000 rental house you, and you allocate 20% to land because land you can't depreciate. So let's say the rental house, the building fire is 275,000. Uh, 30 years ago, the tax code enacted, it's a flat 27 and a half year depreciable life for residential, which is rental houses, rental apartment buildings. 27 and a half years, if you held the rental house for all 12 months, 
275,000 cost basis of the house divided by 27 and a half years, you generate a whopping 10,000 deductions. Generates nothing compared to one reefer because you don't get a tax credit on a rental house. You just got the 10,000 depreciation, but only if you held it from January, 12 months. If you bought the rental house in December, you only get one twelfth of 10,000 or $833 of depreciation. That there's nothing that compares to this. By the way, okay. a version of this concept was used by President Jimmy Carter in 1976 when he was elected president of the US and he used that to legally owe zero tax and also recover all the tax he paid three years before getting elected president. Under the tax law then, you could go back three years, carry forward seven. Under the tax law now, I first have to reduce the client's federal tax to zero. I can go back only one year and recover up to all the federal tax I paid last year, 2020. If I still have extra credit service deductions, I can use them any time in the next 20 years. So the law now says I can only go back one year, but I can go for 20 years. I'll be calling you. Dr. Wong, this is Cherish. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, I can see Hi. you now. <laughs> Hello, my, my question is, uh, uh, what's the risk with your strategy? Well, actually, that there's risk in everything, but pretty limited. Let's cover it. People say, what if the end user doesn't pay the rent? One, we collect the, they pay rent annually. We collect it up front, not at the end of the year, the beginning of the year. Next, under what scenario are all these giant food companies, Walmart, Kroger, Safeway, McDonald's, Starbucks, going to go out of business. There are only two scenarios I can think of. Nuclear war or the Chinese communists unleash an even deadlier pandemic. In either case, over 300 million Americans are dead. At that point, does it really matter what you invested in? Next, let's cover the other issue. Let's cover the, the test that no one wanted, which is coronavirus. Before coronavirus hit, it, it took two large food trailers to stock a normal sized grocery store across America. Once coronavirus hit and the panic buying, it took three times as much, it took six large food trailers. And even then you couldn't buy, you saw empty shelves. You couldn't buy Charmin toilet paper for months. Does everyone remember that? You couldn't buy the economy size for $5 or $4 at Fry's, which is owned by Kroger of the antibacterial soap. You could only buy the little seven ounce size and they charge a dollar eighty, and the sign said limit two. Does everyone remember that? There wasn't enough man and woman power to unload the food trailers. So do you remember a year ago in Arizona they called out the Arizona National Guard? So at midnight they're unloading the food trailers and they're stocking the grocery shelves. So food and energy are deemed essential. They were not closed down like pro sports, where you saw pro football, basketball games, baseball games. But it's weird, there's no fans there. Or cruise lines were shut down, or restaurants were shut down in New York, in California, elsewhere. Food and energy are both deemed essential. So under the test that nobody wanted, coronavirus, demand tripled, it didn't go down. So does that cover, those are the two risks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for uh, putting it in perspective. Thank you. Uh, next question. By the way, to our experienced people, Carrie, Brian, Carrie, uh, Brian Jones, Carrie, Castellet, because I can only see your three faces and cherish. Do you see a place for this marketing approach? Uh, again, forget the bottom 90%, but go after either the fix and flippers, go after those that have uh, 10, 20, 50, 100 rental houses, go after the commercial uh, real estate, particularly the owners of small commercial real estate companies, because they understand all the listings they can't get because the guy's been investing in real estate 30, 40 years, can't stand the fact he started with a hundred thousands of down payment at fourplex 40 years ago. And now he's facing over 2 million of tax. He... So I can't hear you, Brian or Carrie, can you unmute yourself? Um... There's, there's people that are needing to drop off for their next appointments, but I'm okay. going to keep on recording here. Um, 
in a lot, there's a lot of us that don't go after the top, you know, tier because of in, in the environment we live in, particularly in the Phoenix metro area, where um, the the high end brokers, maybe the Carol Royces of the world, might be looking for like advertising dollars rather than helping them build wealth. And so this gives another, this gives us a tool to be able to go and to say to the Carol Royces of the world or whomever they are, Carol Royce is in my backyard, I know exactly who you're talking about, um, but to go and have a conversation with some of these upper end real estate agents that maybe would forego some of the advertising dollars to create additional wealth for themselves with, with the tool. Is that what you're kind of going for? Yes, and, and let me just give you a concrete example. In many real estate offices, you're on the leaderboard if you just do 20 sides. So let's say, let's take a simple $300,000 house. You get 3% one side, the buyer sell side. So 9,000 times 20 deals is 180,000. Let's suppose your expenses are 60, so you net 120,000. That's good. Now, how do you double your income? Let's say you market to the affluent side of your database and you just do 10 more deals, but it's a $500,000 house. So now 3% of 500,000 is 15,000 times 10 is 150 grand, but a lot of your overhead like your car is fixed. So on that extra 150,000 of commissions, suppose you only have 30,000 expenses, so you netted 120. So now from your 20 normal deals, you netted 120. Now you add another 120. So guess what? You're, you're netting 240. Again, I can help them not pay tax on the 120. Remember, a 50,000 a year for 20 years makes two and a half million. What would 125,000 a year? That's two and a half times. Two and a half times times two and a half million, that adds $6 million to the net worth. This is mind blowing. I'm sure 99% of your realtors and mortgage people had no idea that this is the easiest way to create a multi-million dollar net worth. I am fascinated. Is the, uh, the opportunity to have the slides, is that something that we can have to ingest or is that something that you'd prefer if we have somebody that we think might be a good opportunity that you would rather do with a Zoom call, call directly? Well, here's, here's the deal, Carrie. There's a lot of intellectual property in it. I, I want this to be available to all your reps to look at as much as possible. But here's what I'd suggest. Uh, if you have a target, uh, you know, a top realtor, a commercial realtor, uh, let's do a joint call to them and see if I can help you close the deal. But you have the concept. Does that make sense? Sure. I don't want you to copy all the slides, but can you copy one or two like for that commercial realtor and show them here's how much tax. Uh, if, if one of your prospective listings is four million gain, here's how much the taxes. Feel free to use that slide, and just point out uh, 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 our educational brain trust, uh, our tax expert, which happens to be me, uh, can help your clients avoid tax. And so there's no reason why they shouldn't be able to list with you, cash out at the top of the market then go on and enjoy life, which is their wife has been after them for the last decade. It's just that they don't have to pay tax. I mean, I'm going to save, uh, I don't sound braggadocio, but Whole Foods is up their back order from 100 to 400 units. Whole Foods was bought about three years ago by Amazon. And you realize Amazon in 2017-18, which made Jeff Bezos the founder, the richest guy in the world, in 2017 and 18, Amazon didn't pay any corporate income tax. GM didn't pay tax. Ger General, that's General Motors. Netflix didn't pay tax. John Deere that makes farm equipment didn't pay. Uh, Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hiram didn't pay tax. The law should apply to everyone, even if you're not Jeff Bezos, Jimmy Carter, Governor Reagan, uh, when he was uh, governor of California, it should apply to everyone. And uh, we just use the same strategies that the big boys, your presidents and your governors use, except it applies to everyone. So anyway, Whole Foods is up their back order from 100 to 400, except they're in the cash sale price program where they pay 125 to 140,000, but California kicks in about half in grant money. So take a 26% credit 
times $50 million, 400 times 125000 figure out how much they're going to save in tax. Again, the law applies to everyone. I'm just showing you something that can I guess none of you have ever seen before. These are how the big boys avoid tax. And they're not doing anything wrong. Uh, by not paying tax, they, these big companies have been able to hire millions of employees, pay half their Social Security and Medicare, pay most of their medical insurance, give higher wages, bonuses, and, and create millions of jobs. Is there anything wrong with that? Dr. Wong, you talk about the corporate sector. Um, this scenario that you presented to us today, would that just be for individuals and husband wives or does this, would this be beneficial and applicable to uh, LLCs uh, and, and entities of that nature? Because I know a lot of investors hold in LLCs. So could you talk about that for a minute? Well, yeah, the LLC almost all is they treat, you can treat it to be taxed as a corporation or a pass through as a partnership. So in almost all LLCs, it just passes through the individual. So any net profit passes through the individual. So yeah, uh, the, these solar reefers uh, or the defined benefit pension plan can either be done at the corporate level or it can they be done at a partnership level or it can be done at the individual level. The simplest is to do it at an individual level. Right, but if you had two individuals who were not married, they, they could create an LLC for this particular venture. Well, or we do, where, where we do a strategy, a tax strategy for each of them. I've run into people, older people that are in their second or third relationship. So they're not legally married. This just came in uh, on Monday. So I spent five hours with this couple. There was no charge and unusual it lasts that long, normally it's two to three hours. And each is over a million dollars. I got to put a separate tax plan together and retirement plan for each of them. They, they, their relationship began three years ago on a ballroom dance floor in the state of Washington by Seattle. And they only moved to Sun Lakes about within the last month. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, perfect, thank you. Anybody else? No, I, I wanted just to thank Dr. Wong. I, I What an interesting, fascinating, uh, my head is spinning because I'm looking at grabbing my wife and my twin brother and and taking some money and putting it together and buying a trailer for myself and creating wealth for not only others, but for myself. I see this is really, really fascinating. Oh, by the way, I'm so conservative. I'm not a salesperson. My business card says tax advisor, financial educator. Anything I've done for the last 40 years, whether it be real estate, equipment, you can, um, we don't even let you do it unless you take a tour. In this case, take a tour of our reefer factory, a quarter mile southwest of Greenfield and McDowell Road in Mesa. We tell everyone, bring any engineer friends, any science friends, anyone with a PhD in chemistry. All these people marvel. Some of the people uh, who've been around a long time, when we show the flip chip technology, we do the solar panels. An engineer from Motorola said, oh, you're the guys that invented it. Or if they're even older, they remember this. Two brothers started it. The older one is a PhD in physics. He's about 76. They built the first, they're from Michigan. They built the first chip factory for Detroit auto industry. Sensors for Ford in the 1970s. So if you bring in of your technology friends, particularly if they have advanced knowledge, they will actually recognize many of the inventions that are applicable in the building of computer chips, and other technologies uh and so but see if you bring all your engineer and science friends it will make you feel more comfortable we normally have the tour 9 a.m to 11 30 but if there's two or three engineers there automatically there's an extra hour and a half of questions so we're there for four hours i mean if you have engineer friends you know what i mean when we run a car we just want to know is the gas pedal on the right and the brake to the left of the gas pedal an engineer wants to find out where those 250 horses are hiding under the hood. Is, am I correct? That is right. I'm married to one. <laughs> I know that for a fact. Um, so if somebody would like to get a hold of you, what is the best way to, to do that? Because I'm going to send out more information to the rest of it. We have about, we're over 50 people strong and 
you know, some of the people had a drop off quite a while ago. So I'll have the, the recording that I can send out. I'm going to stop it right now, as a matter of fact.